Okay, so on the GitLab database group, uh, we're thinking about how to do uh, database sharding, and we've been thinking about um, Postgres partitioning a lot. And I've been toying with the idea that we had about uh, pu putting those partitions on the foreign server, so using a foreign data wrapper uh, to basically distribute the data across uh, multiple shards. And uh, I'm going to record a quick demo of, of how that could look like. Uh, it's pretty hacked together, uh, but perhaps that's the start. So in this example, I'm again using uh, the issues table here, and we're partitioning by um, a hash of the project ID. The reason is simply that this is already available, so we don't have to add more um, columns uh, and load the data for that. Um, we're going to create eight partitions. Uh, we distribute them on two shards, and a shard is a local database here. Um, so that's a physically separate database on the same cluster. Uh, and the idea is that obviously you can you can use that later and run that on a different cluster as well. Um, I'm in my development environment here. Uh, I have a, a blank uh, database, so that's the standard uh, GitLab schema, and um, I have a pending migration here. So um, while I run that in the background, we can perhaps take a look at this. Um, so in this migration, we basically create those two shard databases. Um, we drop the issues table, so that's the existing one. Just get rid of that, and then we run this um, SQL script, and that basically recreates the issues table and uh, makes that a partition table, partition by project ID, uh, create a sequence, um, and all that. And um, note that there is, we don't create any indexes, primary keys, foreign keys. Uh, those all go to the um, foreign tables that we create later. And this is the interesting part. Basically, we uh, create a separate schema for putting the um, tables or the partitions later. Uh, we create the extension for the foreign data wrapper. Uh, we create two shards. Uh, those are servers, um, foreign servers. And they basically point to the same my local uh, Postgres instance. Um, and they use a local uh, database each. Those are the ones we created earlier. A uh, bit of user mapping, and then we create the foreign tables. Those are basically the partitions of the issues table. Um, so this is pretty standard partitioning, except that we do it on, in a foreign manner, and we point this to uh, those shards. So basically, uh, cutting this in half and distributing those those partitions equally on the shards. All right, so that worked fine. Um, then let's take a look at how to create those shards. I put that into a simple script, uh, basically taking a um, template for, for a uh, foreign table and then just creating uh, SQL scripts for each of the shards. And we can look at those as well. Um, so this is uh, yeah, creating the first foreign table or you know the first partition, uh, same schema, creating the indexes. Um, not adding the foreign keys, we can talk about it later, and then uh, repeating the same thing for for the next partition, basically. So um, let's run that as well. Doing that on shard one, and then we do the same thing on shard two. Okay. And then while I run some. Um, seeding so that we get some actual data i run that in the background and then we can perhaps look at the at the um stuff that we just created just getting the seeding right here all right so uh this is the original schema this is the issues table uh pretty much the same except it doesn't have any indexes and constraints but it has those eight partitions if we take a look at those uh, this is pretty standard, so pointing pointing to those uh, partitions that we created. Taking a look at those, uh, we can see that those are foreign tables. So uh, those are the partitions, and those are foreign tables. <clears throat> and now if we take a look, we have those two uh, local databases, shard one and shard two. We can connect to those, and then uh, we again see there is a parts schema. 
easier here. Um, and those are just plain tables, the ones we created earlier. Looking at those, uh, this is again the same schema. There we have those indexes, um, but no foreign keys. Reason why we don't have foreign keys here is that you can obviously only relate to something or reference something that is on the same chart. Uh, in this case, we, for example, would want to um, reference the users table from the issues table, but truth is we don't have the users tables on the same chart, so we can't do that. Um, so that is a sort of a limitation uh, that you can't have cross charts, cross chart foreign keys or um, constraints, stuff like that. Okay, then uh, let's go back to the main database and the seeding uh, is still running, but it already created some issues, I suppose. So let's take a look at this, um, just selecting everything. So there's a bunch of issues in the table. Um, let's perhaps see a plan for the for that query. Um, we can see that uh, this looks like partitioning, except that um, those are foreign scans. So we're scanning uh, each of those partitions and, and each of them lives somewhere else. So we, we scan that uh, foreign server. Um, perhaps we can take a look at how this works for when you have the partitioning key available. So in our case, that's project ID. Uh, we can perhaps take a quick look which projects we have. So um, just taking a random example. So now we add the project ID filter, let's say project ID two, and then we look at this and um, now we don't scan, uh, or we, we only scan the, part the partition for um, this particular project, um, or you know, where, where project, the hash of the project ID uh, modulo eight is two. Um, and those all those projects are in there and we only scan the foreign key. So we basically skip over all the other partitions. Um, that's pretty much the same with, with local partitioning. Um, here again, just that we're scanning on the foreign server. Um, yep, that's pretty much it, I think. Um, next step would be to figure out how we, how we would do schema migrations because that's a real pain. We already know that and uh, with uh, Geo, so I think that's the reason why Geo moved away with uh, from foreign data wrappers. Um, because you sort of have to maintain the schema in the um, basically in the main database, and then also uh, you have the same schema in the um, in the uh, shard database. You know if I'm getting that right. And actually, look at this. So uh, yeah, there is this schema you have to maintain, and you also have to maintain the schema of the um, foreign table in the in the main database, and that might that that's for sure uh, more complex to manage. All right, that's pretty much it. Um, let's see what the next steps. <laughs>